Hi, I'm Joni Patree and welcome to my YouTube channel. Well, today I want to talk about a chart that is so interesting and what a life of Kobe Bryant. Now, we all know that Kobe Bryant died tragically in a helicopter accident on January 26 of 2020. But he was one of the most decorated athletes in all of history. He was a basketball player for the Los Angeles Lakers, and he was over 20 years. I mean, everyone just really rooted for him because he was one of those players that he was going to win at all cost. And he was incredibly talented. So I want to put up his chart to look at his life, to see what he was about, but most of all, how we can better predict certain things and variables that can cause these type of tragic accidents. So hopefully maybe they could be avoided. But one of the planets that is usually part of these kind of deceptive, confusing type things that you don't expect to happen is the planet Neptune. Now, Neptune is such a powerful indicator for secrets, illusions, and scandals that I just completed a book on Neptune. It will soon be available on Amazon, and it is called Neptune, Secrets of illusion and scandals. I will let you know when it comes out because it is such an incredible resource of research concerning this outer planet that I so believe in. So putting up the chart of Kobe Bryant, you can see that he has Sagittarius as his ascendant. With Sagittarius as his ascendant, you know that so much has been happening in this sign. The eclipse that happened December 26 of 2019, plus Saturn was in Sagittarius for so very long. And now we have Jupiter in Sagittarius. And Jupiter can sometimes make things more intense and bigger. So... Looking at his chart, though, notice in his 10th house of his reputation, of his career, which is sports, he's an athlete. He has Mars in the 10th house with Rahu. This is so common to see Mars with Rahu. You would not believe how many athletes have this because Mars is muscle sports, athletics, and Rahu magnifies it all the more. Being with, being in Virgo is very calculating. Being able to make those plays, to be able to see and pretty much do the planning in the head. It's very mathematical, Mars in Virgo. And also, if you'll notice, there's Pluto next to Mars, and Pluto will magnify things as well, make it extraordinarily powerful off the charts. Even Venus is in his 10th house, and even though Venus is debilitated, it still represents charm and grace and attraction. Mars and Venus both together in the 10th house, this is what made him so popular in the world, why people loved him and followed him. He had so many fans. This was quite a jarring shock to the world when he died in such a unnecessarily terrible accident because nine people perished in this with his daughter. That was just a nightmare. Can't imagine. But looking at the transiting planets on that day, the fact that transiting K2 was right on the ascendant. Remember that the ascendant is you. So if you put the transit of K2 which was happening on this day, January 26 of 2020, K2 being right there, his ascendant is right there at 16 degrees, and we have transiting K2 at 14 degrees. 
And what happens is K2 is the indicator of losses. So K2 crossing over the ascendant, we feel this deep sense of loss and he actually lost his life. Now, the other aspects that I think are very, very important, as I said before, I wanted to point out where the transit of Neptune was. On the day of this accident, transiting Neptune was at 22 degrees of Aquarius. Now this puts Neptune in the third house, which the third house deals with travels, relatively short travels, and this is what this actually involved. Neptune actually is a planet that rules fog. Imagine that. It is in the third house dealing with travels and Neptune is fog because what is Neptune? Neptune deals with things we cannot see and we can't see through the fog. We can't see the reality. We can't see the truth. It's deception. And knowing this, because look where Neptune is, not only is it just in the third house of travels, but it is exactly aspecting his Venus by a quincunx aspect, which is actually what we call in Vedic astrology, a Shastaka, which means 8-6 or 6-8 relationship between the planets. So if you count from where Neptune was at 22 degrees of Aquarius, I don't have the transiting planets displayed up on the chart, but I do have them below the chart, the degrees of where they were on that day. Now just plug them into that chart. So Neptune was aspecting his natal Venus by if you'll count clockwise around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, Neptune is exactly by aspecting Venus eight signs away. And if you count back to Venus to where transiting Neptune was, you'll, you'll arrive at six placements. So we call this an eight, six relationship. What, what does that mean? Eighth house is the house of death and the sixth house is the house of accidents. And Neptune represents that quality of not being able to see. And I have seen Neptune transits deal with death so many times. It does deal with things we can't see. And this was something no one saw coming. Now, as Neptune is activating that Venus, Venus rules... If you look, Venus is the rulership of what? I see it's the ruler of the sixth house, which does rule accidents. So Venus rules the six, but it's in the 10th house where this was a public, he was a public figure and his death stunned all of his fans around America. So not only did Venus rule this, the sixth house of accidents, but Venus being debilitated in the sign of Virgo, meaning it's weak, it's at its weakest sign it can be in, but Virgo is ruled by Mercury. Therefore, Mercury is the dispositing planet of Venus, which means this is the cause. Where the dispositor is, it's the root cause energy of any planet. And Mercury is the dispositor of Venus. And Mercury resides in the eighth house of death with Jupiter, which rules the first house, because Jupiter rules Aquarius. This represents his death came to him. And Mercury is even the planet of travels. In the eighth house, dispositor of Venus, which was being triggered by transiting Neptune. This is actually how you do astrology. Now, some other variables were going on that were pretty obvious, and that was the fact that transiting Saturn on this day was zero degrees of Capricorn, and it was in opposition to natal Jupiter in the eighth house, which rules the chart. Saturn is ending. Saturn is 
setbacks, delays, and probably he was being set back and delayed from moving, going where he wanted to go. But he shouldn't have forced it because Neptune caused him to not see clearly. So you can see how traumatic this was. Now, there's still some other things that I want to point out that I think are interesting about this chart. He did die in this accident with his daughter. And the fifth house rules children, where his moon is located, his natal moon, is in his fifth house in Aries. And I must say that in his natal chart, he has natal Uranus almost exactly opposed his moon, which could mean an accident to his daughter. I wouldn't have been able to predict, though, it would have been with him. But with this day involving so many variables that would represent accidents, he should have been more careful. But hindsight is always 2020. So there is another transit that I think is quite remarkable that a Vedic astrologer wouldn't particularly look at because they're not trained to use the outer planets, but I always have. But this particular aspect happens once every two years, but I think coupled together with the fact that the transit of Neptune was exactly aspecting that natal Venus. You could have pinpointed this day down to the day. And on this day, transiting Mars was exactly at 21 degrees of Scorpio, which was exactly on his natal Neptune in the 12th house of hidden hidden things, things you can't see. And Neptune is fog. In the 12th house, it was his demise. But let me remind you, every two years, everyone will go through a transit of Mars crossing over their Neptune, and not everyone dies every two years. But it's when these outer planets are casting an aspect that are long range for a long duration of time, which transiting Neptune was in an 8-6 relationship to natal Venus. And while Neptune was in this relationship to Venus, transiting Mars kicked it off as the day that it occurred by transiting over his natal Neptune. Now, this is a generational asp. This is a generational piece. Wherever Neptune is, because Neptune stays in a sign for so long, for about 12, sometimes almost 14 years, it stays in a sign, an entire generation will have it in a particular sign. So everyone born around 1978 will have Neptune around the same place, within three degrees, actually. Because really, Neptune only, uh, if you take the, the sum balance of how much Neptune moves in a year, it is, it is approximately three degrees. So everyone born around this time in 78, 1978, would have had Neptune right there around 21 degrees of Scorpio. So everyone has that Mars, transiting Mars, hitting it at the same time. Does everyone die? No, of course not. But my point is, because Neptune rules generations and groups of people, especially within a 12 to 14 year span, this is the masses that were affected by this shocking accident. It put shockwaves through the United States. So this was affecting the masses. That is my point with this. But all of these other variables, of course, his ascendant sign, his moon sign, all of the things that make his chart specific really boil it down to the events happening on this day. But 
with everything that I know about the outer planets and Neptune particularly, I would never ever think to look at a chart without incorporating the, the outer planets, Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. So with this, I'd like to close, but I do want to um, know, want you to know that looking at these charts can better help us so that we can help prevent certain circumstances in the future. And I just want to say what a talent this individual was to have so much discipline, power, and talent, and to have such a strong human spirit. That's what I want to bring out, uh, the good uh, in this chart and what it's all about. Although we do know that looking at Mercury and Jupiter, in Cancer, in the 8th house, not only does the 8th house deal with death, but it does deal with deep, deep psychological, emotional stuff, just like planet Pluto does. So the fact that Kobe Bryant also had Venus conjunct Pluto could deal with scandals, could deal with humiliation and disgrace as well. Everything is here in a chart. So let's learn from it. So with that, I'd like to close. If you would like more information, receive my free newsletter or schedule a consultation with me, you can go to my website, which is galacticcenter.org. And if you would like to learn Vedic astrology, go to my university website, which is universityofvedicastrology.com. And also remember, check out my new book on Neptune Secrets, Illusion, and Scandals. Thank you.